Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Today we're joined by our special guest, Ori Ben Shabbat, who is the first ever interactive and immersive champion. Hello my friend, how are you doing today? Good, very good, thanks Abel. And how does it feel to be the first winner of the interactive and immersive championship? Wow, how do you feel? You know, it, it's, 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 it's hard to define because it's on so many levels, you know, it's on the professional level, community, social level, Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty exciting. I, I, I mean, as one that wasn't so involved in the community and the forums and just, you know, heard about people like you or Matthew or Greg, kind of just from, <laughs> you know, nibbling through websites, mm -hmm. um, suddenly being there in front line, you know, and actually winning it, right, uh, blew my mind, you know. And for people who maybe don't know, you know, who you are, kind of what your background is. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe how you picked up Touch Designer, what kind of work you're doing with it? Um, yeah, sure. I, I know it's, it's kind of, I guess like a, I'll try to make a long story short. Um, when I was really young, like, like, like toddler or like uh, between toddler and high school, I think my, my passion was like Lego. My parents, my parents is camera which mm. back then was just like I don't know funny tapes and I used to do and 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 film so basically it's like Lego I built like all kind of lawnmowers and and, and all machinery and I used the camera to do like stop motion magic with my sister and fast forward it became Lego became Arduino mm. camera became ca camera became actually actually filming directing post production and and kind of in the mesh between all of them i really love music and and playing so it kind of it, it kind of became all aspects of visual and technical endeavors you mm -hmm. know so, i mean i cannot define myself as a director even though i did direct and i do direct still i can uh, define myself as like a Compositor, even though I did do that and I do that, and I, I mean, it's like yeah. um, I know in the industry maybe they call it generalist, mm -hmm. but taken from an artistic passion. So uh, I don't know. Uh, professionally, I guess it was I worked uh, in an image engine. Um, it's a post-production facility in Vancouver mm -hmm. for about three three years. It was an awesome, awesome experience. I worked with Spy Films in Toronto as a director. Um, I worked with Maria Kong, it's a dance company oh, for interesting. seven years. Yeah, for seven years, uh, I actually performed live on stage with them mm -hmm. and was part of everything. And I guess the highlight, you can call it in, in this endeavor, was I, I made a, a, a digital glove using Arduino and Arduino Fio, if anybody knows. And I, I connected those little buttons that you close circuit, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 made the whole show run from the stage. So I would make sound effects. I would make the show go to the next chapter. I would I would make like I'm fixing the actors on the stage. So um, that was that. And from there, it's like general. I don't know anything from visual effects to directing to building those funny gloves. Yeah, that's interesting. And then in the and then in the middle of everything. He came along, uh, touch the vinyl, <laughs> and changed everything. <laughs> yeah, because it sounds like you have a really like mixed background that lends itself to touch designer, where you know you have the film stuff, you have some dance stuff and performance stuff, you have the Arduino and the tinkering with hardware and technology. And do you find that touch designer was you know the best tool or the most interesting tool that helped you bring all of these different you know passions together? Yeah, because. Again, Touch Designer was like almost a substitute for a whole bunch of tools. Mm -hmm. So it basically, I was, Arduino was also meaning processing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how would you communicate serially and do stuff with it? And how would you connect it to a MIDI device and blah, blah, blah. So you would take processing and all kind of Max and Ableton and all so many, so many tools that give you different solutions or you know, what kind of OSC 
stuff like there's so many little programs that do all kind of little snippets mm-hmm. but then uh, came along <laughs> touch designer and said you know what I can give you everything you know you just need to learn this um, this uh, interface and this uh, visual programming mm-hmm. uh, the way they they call it and how long have you been working with touch designer now um, maybe 10 years Wow from the moment I actually touched it yeah till till now I mean I mean again I, I would bring up this dude on intention which is a good friend of mine but he also kind of at the first at the first times you know you really you really need someone to take you by the hand because it's such an unknown territory I mean you I do I did work with um with um uh, with node based programs like nuke and and Maya I guess are the 3d program it is a bit of node based but for some reason Touch designer, it's more like Houdini, mm-hmm. and Houdini is like, and Houdini and touch designer, it's kind of like a whole different ball game. Yeah. So you have to have a little bit of a, a thread leading you in, and my thread was one intention, which was uh, very happy to. How do I make a, you know, a, a value multiply by five? <laughs> and he will be like, yeah, you need this chop, you need this thing. It's called chop, yeah. you know. And and, and 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 then once you really get it a little bit. Then the world opens up and it's up to you to explore. But with the help of uh, amazing people like you, Elbrus, and, and Matthew, and all the people that really give back to the com- by piles, you know, give back to the community, mm-hmm. which I, I wish I, I, I did too. I mean, that was, I, I, but I don't know besides creativity what I can basically give. I don't invent mm-hmm. uh, all kind of like C nodes and uh, I don't know all these shenanigans you find online. And I would say Ronan is definitely an amazing developer to have around because, you know, his background in Houdini and then Touch Designer yeah. and all his work with Phenomena Labs, like you, you had a really good friend there who could take you yes. all those different ways. And, you know, if you had that yeah. little problem like, oh, hey, Ronan, how do I do this and that and, you know, yeah. Im- immediate tech support. So that that sounds pretty amazing. And, and congrats for yeah, having su- such a nice friend. And, around. And, he, and he was really happy helping, you know, and, and again, I think it's true. Like maybe maybe I don't know how it is really i don't know besides ronan any 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 really other person that uses touch designer i mean it's a, such a small community i mean mm. I, I, I guess i'm just exposed to it but uh, I, is it i mean i'm asking you now a question mm. but is it a small community or, or is just because we are small or the i mean the community is small but the, but the program is huge i don't know how it's i think you know? there, there's a lot of different aspects to it that i've seen and i think it's changing really quickly too. So I think, you know, from the people who started around 10 years ago, there's a very small number, you know, 10 years and before is like a really small number of people. And then they were like the mentors for the next generation, which was, you know, me, Matthew, um, and a lot of the other folks that are kind of a little bit younger. And then they kind of mentored us. And, you know, there was a bit of a bigger group of those folks. So I would say probably like maybe Ronan is, is in that generation with us. And then yeah. now we're kind of getting to this new generation where we're the mentors for all of the young, you know, 19, 20, 21 year olds. And, you know, now yeah. they have they have university programs and college programs they can go to to learn, you know, touch designer, processing, creative really? coding. Yeah, there, there's so many ah, new yeah, ones. Yeah. I and think, uh, I think in Israel, I heard also about one school that brought, but it's up to the teacher to bring in touch designer as part of the visual studies curriculum. Yeah, you're right. So I think then this new wave is going to be really huge because now we have, you know, young adults coming out of university, out of college. They've touched touch designer a little bit. They have a little bit of processing, a little bit of Max MSP. And now they're kind of excited to get out into the working world. So, you know, I think it's one of those things where at this moment, if you're looking for, you know, the Ronins of the world, there's less of them. But now it's becoming a bigger and bigger community, which is really exciting to see. So I think, uh, you know, another question I wanted to ask you was, yeah, sure. especially with your background coming into the championship, you know, how did you prepare yourself if you prepared yourself at all? You know, what was your approach to, to getting into the championship? Well, um, how would I, at first I was super nervous, <laughs> you know, and, and, and trying, you know, going through the, what you wrote about the challenge and trying to decipher what what am I needing to do and like try to find a plan in advance mm. but I think very quickly I understood that I just you know what it made me go through and I think it summarizes my experience 
it made, made me go through all this all my assets oh interesting putting that putting them into order putting throwing away junk that doesn't work taking all the kind of little GLSL stuff I converted from shader toy packaging them putting some controls saving it in a nice folder and now and now even even now I'm still using like a very organized folders and I realized pretty much after the even like the first minutes of the challenge I realized that it's gonna be all about creativity mm-hmm. it's not gonna be uh, and you only made it strong you made you made it feeling stronger when you and Matthew were talking about um, the aesthetics of the next round you really made clear that it's not about photo real or like crazy shader it's gonna be just like awesomeness creativity mm-hmm. um, and so so in that aspect I just tried to prepare as much as I can um, technically like having all kind of assets that I like even like a little double click con- con- container and a little bit of, of I don't know like a chromatic aberration container mm-hmm. and all kind of stuff like that and then basically just staying strong with uh, the ideas that comes when you say aesthetics wow well, what would I like to make, you know? And then I would start to imagine and envision things, but not necessarily just prepare, as mm-hmm. in literal exam prepared, you know? Well, I think that's, so, a, pretty, that's a pretty smart approach because even when we were designing the challenges, you know, we were always thinking about, okay, well, you know, how do we test and challenge one aspect of, you know, your development practice, whether it's the technical side or the integration or any of the other ones, but... Even when we're testing that, how do we leave it open so that everyone can, you know, really be an artist, show off their creativity, have fun, not be worried that they can't do it just because, you know, they don't know the one thing. And I think that's a really smart thing you did by, instead of trying to really do the exam prep for, you know, what are all the technical challenges they could ask me, it sounds like you kind of looked more within yourself and just saying, you know, what are the tools that I have? What are the things that I like making? What is my style? What is my art? And how can I just prepare myself to represent myself? It, would you think that's like an yeah. accurate way of summarizing your preparation? Uh, yeah, you know, for me, it was a little bit, to be honest, uh, because of my experience being on stage. Mm-hmm. It was feeling like going on stage, you know, going into the competition. And I'm sure for people who have never been in this situation of going in front of many people and having this you know these bumps and this rush yeah. and this and then when you actually go in it's like a different it's like the other side of the coin it's not like you're getting more excited or like the excitement come like relax being um, changes it's just it's a whole different game mm. suddenly boom you're like are you in the zone are you nerve like are you not in the zone it's like a whole different conversation and it felt a lot like that, mm. you know, even even like after the, I mean, I, I cannot, uh, I, I was hyped by by my success, so I cannot say how it was without being in that hype. But even after that, it felt like a good show, mm. you know, like I gave a good show and and we did it and all the people back, st- back at the Discord forum was so nice. And so, you know, like I was like, uh, hi, I'm Ori, kind of like... I, I, you know, I've never, I've never done something like that. Also, socially, so for me, it was like a whole, a whole, a whole experience, a whole experience, a whole as in like complete package. Well, I, I'm hoping also that now the experience of the social side kind of lures you in, and now we'll see you on the Touch Designer Discord and more on the forums, hanging out because uh, I, I wish, you know, I, I wish, you know, even this is something I can even ask you or like anybody who's listened. How, how would someone that you know, I I I cannot say I'm shy mm. in the sense of like like uh, embarrassed, but it's it, it's overwhelming, you know. And I'm not a techno- I'm not a technophobic, you mm. know. Like I'm, that's what I do, right? But still, there's something about this social media that you know. I think you really need to get into it and to see that you are, and this is just by uh, just testing. You need to see that you're not you're not at its mercy. Mm-hmm. You know, you you can you can go into a forum and then oops, take your hands out, even though there's like tens, even hundreds of people, mm-hmm. right? And it's it, it feels like very committing, and I think I shouldn't take it so so uh, intensely. Just 
I don't know. I, I, it's it's so new to me. You know, like I, I had Facebook and then I stopped using it, and so I, I, I don't know. Well, well, Nen actually keeps bugging me, saying you have to put on your shit on Instagram or something. You have to open a channel. You have to. So I'm actually in the mid in the midst of trying to organize like some. I'm trying to create a show, mm -hmm. some some kind, and it's part. And this competition and this uh, involvement in the social media aspect of it made me go through that a bit, which is I'm still in the midst of it mm -hmm. right now. I, I think there's two ways to think about it. So, like on the one side, there's more of the private social community, you know, like the forum, Touch Designer, Discord. Right. I think those places are a little bit more relaxed and especially less commitment just because it's it's almost more just like we're chatting and then you're like oh hey i have to go for dinner like i'll be back later and i think those places okay. are fine I, I would recommend everybody joins you know the forum the touch designer discord there they, as you saw everyone is so nice and supportive it's really like a love fest a little bit and then i guess on the social media side you know like facebook instagram these kind of things if i had one just small piece of advice it would be don't become a slave to the numbers because i think that's the you know that grip that you're talking about be is when you know you're you're looking at the follow count every hour and you're looking at how right. many likes people have put on this the post and then then you get emotionally affected you know when one thing gets a lot of likes and the other thing doesn't get likes you start questioning your art you know was this art good like people didn't like it and i think that's you just have to ignore all that and treat it Mm. Almost like what you're saying. Treat it like a show. You know, it's, I, I remember when I was a musician, sometimes we'd play a club, there'd be five people. Sometimes we'd play it, there'd be 500. But you still play it the same way every time. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter if there's five people <laughs> or 500. You play the best you can and then you're happy with how you played. And I think if you have that approach to social media as well, just post your stuff out there, share your, your art, your creativity, your love for what you do. Don't worry about the numbers. You know, those are, those are how they get you. Don't, don't worry about the numbers, you know, just post it, almost treat it like a website portfolio. You know, you're not on your website every day checking Google yeah, Analytics yeah, to yeah. see who clicked on which, you know, they, we don't do that. So why would we have to do that in social media, I think? Yeah, actually, you're right. One of my thoughts was like, it's just an online portfolio. Mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about it too much. Yeah. It's not like you're like on some podium. Giving exactly, a right. The world, they they make know? it it's feel like, like you're on a podium, but you're, you're really not on any podium. Yeah. No, you are at home and you can go like bye. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so out of all the challenges, yeah. I'm curious to see which one was your favorite challenge to go through. Well, but my favorite challenge, of course, was the, the aesthetics, just because uh, I, I, even I, you know, like I'm pretty humble, you know. I, I, I still question my uh, <laughs> my professionalism every day, mm. even though even though getting a first prize on on this some championship you know i still feel did they deserve it was i am I good enough am i like was it fair you know like keep questioning questioning but the aesthetics i feel like it was really good generally mm. you know there was something really creative about it and i think it was creative in the deepest sense of it you know I, i'll share something personal mm. the same day i i had like a little fight with my wife oh no right and and i came through to the a little bit uh, depressed you know and um and then i don't know if you know the magic if you I, i'm sure you do I just I, i'm second expression you know and then uh, like the the magic of creation mm. it's when things fall into place without any kind of planning and what fell into place it was like you know maybe i should do something about it the, the way i feel and 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 put it into the art and then like somebody at the phone was suggesting was speculating that the aesthetics gonna will, will be involved some sort of some sort of like uh, a, a landscape mm. challenge, you know. And I was like, oh wow. And then I was thinking about my wife and how we are doing it together. And then suddenly, uh, and and suddenly you uh, the, the, there was a favorite artist, and then uh, like this Chima, and like everything led to this giant wheel of life, mm. musical giantly wheel of life where two people are just. Pushing the way for the music of life. That's so beautiful. That's amazing. So, so, so it's really, but it, that was really it. Yeah. If the other challenges were like, very oh, this is how oh, you can be cool to do this, blah, 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 and you do something. But that was that was deep, man. Mm. You know, and and I'm really sharing. So that's why I like it. I think it's it I truly. Crazy. I really think it showed as well because 
you know, all the judges when we were looking at it, we we're like, oh my god, like this is this is a real piece of beautiful art that we're seeing, like get made so quickly. Thanks. Everything was falling into line, and we're you know, we saw the the Sisyphus pusher, the boulder pusher, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, oh, that's cool. What's he gonna do with it? And so that's a really amazing story to hear, kind of the yeah. the artistic kind of narrative behind it. Uh, and yeah. I so so again, like sorry, go ahead. I just just coming back to a question that Greg was asking me about if how I if I planned my timing mm -hmm. with remember I came through into this com challenge aesthetic with when you when I started this is what I saw at the end so it meant just like filling in the blanks you know mm. rather than like creating and understanding what I'm doing as I'm doing it and this is a big I think this is a big uh, big advice if I have to give any kind of advice to whoever listens to whether it is to have a good vision mm -hmm. it's it, and, and vision is like kind of you need to kind of like be there and see what you did already and then taking back is just like to be realistic about it it's not like hairy fairy shit it's like you really see what you're gonna do mm -hmm. in a realistic kind of approach it doesn't mean i'm gonna make this and that and huge for the real and like no i'm gonna make this because this is possible and the idea behind it makes sense like mm -hmm. uh, i don't know if i yeah no i, I agree making it, and i can making any sense on the creative side i think it's incredibly important especially when you have something like a time limit that's you know you got 60 minutes you you have to know where you're gonna go yeah you have to before yeah. you even dive in because if you only figure out 15 20 minutes into the challenge like where you're going yeah i think it's really important because if you get into a time crunch situation you know whether it's the challenge or even in real work you yeah. know if if you start working before you know where you're going you're almost it, it almost is a waste of time right because you're going to yes. go this way a little bit you're going to go this way a little bit you're going to make this thing and then you won't need it and then you're going to oh i need this thing instead and you know taking that time i think at the beginning to really like what you're saying not only envision it but have a realistic vision of yeah. this is where i'm going this makes sense this will be possible this will look good okay now let's let's move towards this yeah. i think it's i think it's really important and it, it leads me to another question that i had for you which was yeah. you know a lot of people always approach touch designer and say it's so hard to make beautiful looking content inside a touch designer you know when you compare it to other applications maybe it's easier in other applications but you always made something really beautiful for all the challenges, you know, even from the leap motion, really nice rendering, great effects, you know, neon lights, everything. And I, I wanted to put you on the spot. You know, what tip would you give to someone who's in touch designer and wants to make beautiful content that looks like yours from the challenges? Well, for, first, I think you and Matthew said it best. You're not going to be judged. And this is an uh, anecdote to the real world, right? You're not your work doesn't matter championship or it's your actual work, will not be judged by how it's photo real. Mm. You know, and this means that there is something else that happens that makes it shine. For example, you know what? Any kind of modern day person who loves 3D, I encourage him to watch, let's say, Toy Story 4. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then go and watch Toy Story 1. And Tell me what works in both scenarios. And it means nice compositions, lighting, materials, all that doesn't have to do with technique. You know, like you're going to have a spotlight. Doesn't matter if it's like area light with final gathering and all GI shit, or it's just like in touch design you know, where you basically have like hard shadow map shit. It's still like lights and sometimes putting a sphere on a plane and putting like those classical key light, rim light, ambient light stuff. Mm -hmm. The basic student shit will be amazing, mm -hmm. right? And and of course, everything that's kind of like, I don't know, glow. Glow, I think it's kind of like a little signature of mine. I love glow. I mean, everybody can love glow. I mean, that's something that I connected to that I like to put into the work. So, so remember, it's not about photo real. It's just about, um, I don't know, having having your own touch in it, and um, 
and really understanding what it means to, 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 to do something beautiful. You know, mm-hmm. not not because it's photo real, but uh, not to say that I would love to have all the unreal not yeah. shit in ray tracing, side. path tracing, like, GI, I everything. Like, just yeah, turn all the buttons uh, on. Yes, please. I would love to. <laughs> and it it sounds a little bit like you know, even going back to your background, what is really helping you in this process is having those kind of foundation knowledge of film composition how to light a scene and those things are the tools that you're bringing into touch designer and saying well you know i don't need gi i just need to know what a good strong artistic lighting setup is going to look like you know where you're saying like rim spot ambient you know etc and yeah. I think that I would probably agree. Like, I think one of the, the toughest parts of touch designer isn't using touch designer, but it's realizing that you almost need to learn, you know, a different industry's little techniques. And then yeah. you can come to touch designer and touch designer is really easy. You know, if it's chops, if you know a little bit about audio processing and DSP, yeah. you know, chops are really easy. And like you're saying, if you know, you know, a bit about film and lighting and composition, all of a sudden making 3D scenes that look good becomes really easy. You know, would you agree with that? Yeah, totally, totally, totally. And and I think that's what's special about Touch Designer because it almost feels like it's a tool for everyone. Mm. Like, I don't think I've ever been in any kind of working environment situation where Touch Designer couldn't be like a key to problem solving. You know, like I have a friend now, um, I have a friend that uh, he did like the, the, uh, the structure and the stage design for the Boom Festival like four years ago, like in, mm-hmm. sorry, two years ago. And he has amazing designers and everything, you know? So I told him, hey, go into Tilt Brush, give your artists to do what they do, right? Not that technical. I'm not going to bomb them with any technical shit. Paint your stuff. Let's bring it in to touch designer and then start to measure it, start to mm. work with it, like start to use it for your benefit. So it's it's like almost like a it's like a, the, 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 the MacGyver tool the, for for anything that has to do with physical digital relationship of any kind. Mm-hmm. It's really I, I think it's it's really hard for me to to even explain this to someone that is not from the field that doesn't know what touch designer is. It really sounds like you're talking about everything. It's yeah. like the, it, it's like you know, like Stephen Hawking was like I, I, Einstein tried to do the theory of everything. This is like the tool for like everything. The the, the software of everything. <laughs> the software of everything. <laughs> I'd agree. I think it's definitely one of the tools where no matter where I am and what I'm working on, there's always a way to like incorporate it and, yes. you know, bring touch designer back into the mix a little bit. And, um, and, I'm, talking, and I'm not talking at all about uh, prototyping and proof of concept stuff, you know, this mm-hmm. is like, by far way shine. Yeah, sorry. No, no problem. So I was gonna say, so now that you are the champion, you're getting a Notch <laughs> Pro Builder license, touch designer commercial license plus dongle, Treasure One hardware crypto wallet, six months subscription to the HQ Pro, a custom trophy, Ooh. you know, congratulations. You know, what's next for you, you know, whether it's uh, career wise or how do you think, you know, these prizes are going to help you just in your kind of day to day life? Oh, well, I think, uh, first of all, I don't have the latest um, touch designer commercial license, which means I haven't gone and started to work with the engine pump. Ooh. Which you're, really in, you're in for a surprise. It's going to be yeah, good. I feel, like, I feel like a virgin, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I, I mean, this, is, this shit has been from, from day one. Can I make an EXE out of this? You know, like everybody's asking me, can you make an EXE out of it? I'm like, no, you can't. You have to have the license for the software. But Engine Comp starts to feel like um, it's a it's, it's fucking serious step. I think for the, I don't know, I don't know how Derivative takes it, but from mm-hmm. a user standpoint, this is like, I don't know, making a render for a 3D program. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. You know? Um, so I, I, it will be, I'll, be, I'll be happy to use it um, for, uh, to have the latest and to keep exploring Touch Designer and using it for my little project. Of this. I have this project that I started talking about, which is um, um, I'm really into like augmented reality, which is 
for me it's like bullshit just live visual effects you know mm. and to do um uh i'm i'm trying to build this uh show where it's like a not really a show like you know like i don't know what it is it's any basically it's, i want to connect with friends which are artists and musicians and i want to give them a live interpretation a live interpretation of their music mm. so it's basically basically imagine what i did for the aesthetics um thing but in real time on um um with uh with a live device with a live video feed and um all kind of like 3d mapping and matching oh that'd be cool you know so it's like i'm, I'm really into like like um the first thing that blew my mind was Buju, i think around oh yeah around 12 years ago or, no even more when was it i don't know i think 2004 i think i i i studied in vancouver film school and uh, I remember passing into passing a, a class somewhere, and I was like, "Oh, what is that?" And I see a computer running a, a scene with a lot of lo- little dots following all kind of uh, features. I was like, "What is that?" And but again, by the room, you have uh, like a 3D scene that you can put stuff on. Mm-hmm. So uh, now in touch design, we can do it in real time with the Vive, and it works amazingly. You know, amazingly. I do fiddle a lot about with uh, how to filter the data that you're getting from uh, from the Vive mm. because it's very raw, you know, yeah. and uh, and uh, and how you're holding the camera and what kind of camera and stuff like that. But I like kind of the raw. So I'm trying to develop something like that in which a touch designer commercial will be a great help. Um, and the notch license, I've, I've I've tried it a bit. I was like, whoa, that's awesome graphics, but I didn't get it. I didn't find a project yet. That that uh, demands something like that. I mean, mm. I don't know. I, in Israel, there's not in Israel the, the the community is not so big, you know. Like um, if there's something I I remember from the chat when Dead Mouse was uh, chatting with another person over there, uh, it really was clear how big the industry is in Canada compared to Israel. You know, mm. they start to talk about names and stuff, which is like. All the stuff that I see online that I'm like, wow, you know, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. And in Israel, you know, I, I hang out with people that this is also the kind of name dropping and stuff that they are talking about, but it's not as even like half as big as, as this. And um, so I, I, I don't have a very big excuse to use, to use Notch. I mean, <laughs> I, at first I need to find a show that have enough budget to get a server to run mm-hmm. Notch, you know. <laughs> So, uh, well, I think you're in luck now with the license. You got the HQ Pro subscription, so you can take our Notch course that tells you how to integrate it with Touch Designer, run it ooh. on the same server. I think you're gonna love it. It's it's a so, really so are you, incredible. Are you are tool. you a Notch user? Are you a heavy Notch user? I'm getting there. I wouldn't say I'm the best Notch developer ever. You know, nowhere near my my Touch Designer skill up here and like my Notch skill, you know, somewhere over here. But okay. uh, I'm really loving the tool. It's so incredible using it with Touch Designer because then with the Notch blocks, you get all of the functions of Notch just directly embedded right into Touch Designer. It's so a really it, just, it becomes it becomes like slider, like control slider. Yeah, it's really cool. So the way it works is you essentially build your Notch application. Yeah. You know your whole it's scene. A, exe file. Don't you don't even need the. It's better than an exe file. You build the whole oh, right. scene, and then you go in Notch and you say, okay, well, all of these parameters, I want these exposed when I okay. bring this into Touch Designer. Then right. you export the DLL from it, the DFX DLL, which is like a little just package. Then you go yeah. to Touch Designer and you say, there's a notch top. And in the notch top, you say, hey, there's the notch DLL that I just made. And it makes custom parameters for all of the things that you told it to expose. And then wow. it, it renders the whole scene perfectly using just notches. As, just as the viewer in notch? Just as the viewer in notch. So then all of a sudden you have wow. this, this whole notch application embedded in a top you know, parameters that are te- that you can easily control with the rest of your touch designer program. And then you can mix it in, you know, if you want alpha compositing, you can turn on alpha inside a notch, then you can like oh, mix wow. and match stuff on top of each other and composite. It's really powerful. I think you're going to like wow. it a lot. I think you're going to like it a wow. lot. That sounds like, uh, I don't know, I'm afraid. <laughs> hey, I don't you- want to I don't want to leave Touch Designer. <laughs> well, the, the beauty is that you use them both because Touch Designer becomes yeah. like this amazing, you know, like what we're saying, this MacGyver Swiss Army knife does everything. 
And then for the things that you want notch for, you know, if it's like really awesome particle systems, really great rendering of some kind of scene or content, you know, you, you pick those mm. pieces and you bring them as if they were native inside a touch designer, which is really, really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, my friend. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, really welcome, appreciate man. it. Congratulations on being the first interactive and immersive champion. And thank for all for our much. viewers out there, if you missed any of the championship recordings are available on our Twitch channel and they'll be up on our YouTube channel as well. And we'll see you in the next one. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.